Hello everybody. I hope all of y'all are having a good day today. Uh, I want to do just a quick video because I've had some people coming after me on Messenger and stuff that are just absolutely just hating me because of what I say the Word of God is. Alright? They want to be ruled by the Bible. Okay, and, and they, everything in the world they do is all about that Bible, all right? Whenever Paul wrote that all scripture is God-breathed and given for inspiration, teaching, rebuking, and stuff like that, and Paul wrote that, that, that to study, to show thyself approved, he was not talking to you. <laughs> it is a private letter to Timothy. It, it, it's, you're reading his mail, okay? This was instructions from Paul to a young man named Timothy 2,000 years ago, all right? Whenever Paul spoke those words, the, the, the Gospels weren't even written yet, the book of Revelation, or the, the scrolls of Revelations hadn't been written yet, and most of the other letters to the churches hadn't been written yet, all right? The scriptures he was talking about, being God-breed and all that stuff, and was telling Timothy not you to study, was the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. All right? Remember, they had been veiled. Moses put on a veil. Right? And Jesus had to open up the eyes of the disciples, their minds, to be able to see the spiritual meaning of the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms, to be able to see underneath the veil. All right? Most only saw the law. They only saw religion out of it. All right? But Paul was telling Timothy that those scriptures are God-breathed. Okay? Even though they had been tampered with, according to Jeremiah 8.8, 8, there was still truth in there. Truth could be found in there. And he's telling him to study those because that's all the Jews, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, would listen to if you didn't use their God, the Torah, the prophets and the Psalms, they wouldn't listen to you at all. The same way Christians are today. Alright? If you're not quoting Bible verses today, they're like they're ready to boot you out the door. They don't want to hear the word of God that's sharper than a double-edged sword. That's the logos. Logos and scripture are entirely different. Logos are the Word of God and Scripture are totally different. They are not the same thing. All right, there's Scripture, which is writings, and then there is the, the Rima Word of God when God speaks to you, and there's the Logo, it's what you speak after the Rima speaks to you. All right, that is what is sharper than a double-edged sword, the Logos. is when you're speaking from the Holy Spirit. And everybody today, most Christians today, I say, well, see, you're saying that, that whenever they were writing those letters and stuff, that they were inspired as they wrote and things like that. Paul makes it clear that, that whenever he was asking them in a letter, he said, hey, pray for me that I be given Logos when I go talk to these people, Logos means divine utterance. It's given to you from God. He said, pray for me that when I go there, God will speak through me and I will be able to, to show these people the truth and, and their ears will be open and they'll hear it, they'll understand it. So he's telling them, he's telling them, pray for me that when I go there, God will give me that. He's not saying every time I write down on a piece of paper, it's God breathed, all right? People make up every excuse in the world to try to stay trapped in the letter. And the, Paul clearly wrote, he said, the letter kills. People try to live their lives according to the letter. The Spirit gives life. It gives you that when you the Spirit is alive and awake within you, that's eternal life, that to know God. Because when He's awake within you, you're going to know it, all right? It's not something that you, well, yeah, I've got the Holy Spirit now. No, it comes with action. It's amazing, it's supernatural, all right? And you will yield the double-edged sword because you'll speak from the Spirit. That's why it's written that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That's the two witnesses, 
all right? The blood of the lamb, the blood is the life force, and their word, the logos of their testimony. I know right now there's going to be a lot of people out there going, he's trying to deceive us. He's trying to tell us don't read our Bible. If you don't read your Bible, read your Bible, okay? I haven't studied the Bible in over eight years. I didn't bring a Bible to the Philippines with me, all right? But I read it a lot when I first became born again. But it's, it's not where I, I, I knew how to live my life. It, it didn't instruct me on how to live my life. I knew that the moment the Spirit of God awakened within me. I knew how I was going to live the rest of my life. I just knew that's the way it's supposed to be. All right? I don't need to read the Bible to stay strong. The reason I use a lot of the Bible is because God will he'll open up my mind to some things that I read a long time ago. And it'd be like, look here, look in the Greek, look in the Hebrew. You're going to see that this is a lot deeper. It's showing you ascension. It's showing that, that when the sleeper awakes, he opens his eye. It's something real. It's something, it's not just some religious experience that, that you have in some church building. That, that God is some faraway entity, you know, watching all of us, looking down on all of us. He lives within us, all right? And you have to get beyond yourself. You have to dig through all these layers of yourself to find him. Seek, all right? Knock. Because the kingdom of heaven is within you. It's a treasure hunt. All right? And when you find it, you will know. All right? It is written on your heart and on your mind. I know so many people out there that say, oh, when I was born again, then I got me a Bible, and that's why I'm doing the Sabbath, and I'm not eating this and touching that, and, and I got to be baptized three times upside down, backwards, and all this stuff, you know. And they, no matter how many times you talk to them about it, they'll say, no, I'm not living by the letter. I'm living by the Spirit. I'm like, you wouldn't know anything about Sabbaths or anything like that if you hadn't read the letter, all right? And now you're trying to live by it. We're born in the age of grace, into the age of the Spirit. The Spirit transforms you. It's not from your works, your religious works or anything. It's not because you read something. How many people out there can't read? How many people out there are deaf, dumb, and blind? You're telling me they can't have an encounter with God? All right? I'm not telling you don't read your Bible. If you want to read your Bible, read it all you want. All right? But if you try to live your life by it, that's where you're going to find death. All right? You have to know God. You have to be born again. If you're born again, it's a supernatural thing. It's not this cheap trick that they do in these buildings called churches. It is something real that is life-changing that is there forever. Once it happens to you, you are changed forever. You'll no, never go back to your vomit. You'll never be deceived because you're real. You are a child of God and he will never let you go. It's amazing. All right, I know what a lot of you guys are already thinking. You're thinking, okay, if, they, if the people didn't need those letters at the time and we don't need those letters now, then why were the letters written? The reason the letters were written was at the time there was two classifications of people really three, all right? There were people who were already born again, the first fruits, and then there was those who were waiting to become born again. They were waiting on the latter rain, the second coming, all right? And then there was the people who were just never gonna believe, okay? It just wasn't gonna happen, all right? Whenever the apostles would write letters to the churches, those letters were sent to elders. People who were already born again. They had already had a supernatural experience of the Holy Spirit awakening within them. All right? <clears throat> and it was written on their heart. They didn't need anybody to tell them how to live or anything like that. The apostles would write those guys letters of encouragement, reminding them, you know, it's not about your works. It's not about the law and stuff like that. It's, you know, just to kind of boost them up to keep them up, you know, because they were facing a lot, all right, a lot of ridicule. And those guys would have to take those letters because those letters were very deep. It was a spiritual language. You couldn't just read what was on the surface. You had to look at them underneath. And if you had the spirit, you could see it. If you didn't have the spirit, you couldn't, all right? 
and they would take those letters and translate it, interpret it into a way that the people who did not have the Spirit yet could understand it, all right? Letting them know, hey, there's people coming at you guys trying to tell, get you to go back to the law and stuff like that. Stay the course, stay the course. That's all it was for. I guarantee you that the apostles that wrote those letters that they did 2,000 years ago, if they would have known, if they would have seen the future on what people were going to do with those writings and that they would start worshiping those letters in the Bible, they would have told those elders, as soon as you read these letters, burn them. I know that for a fact. I know they would do that. Because all they, those people have done today is taking what Jesus did on the cross <clears throat> and open the door for all of us to have the Spirit of God awakened within us, all right? Jesus put an end to the letter. He fulfilled all Scripture, all right? He did that so we could be led by the Spirit again, just like in the Garden of Eden, all right? And what mankind did when they put everybody back under the letter again, when they brought out the Bible. There's nothing wrong with the Bible as a physical entity, all right? But it's whenever you start saying that it gives you power. When you say it's perfect and infallible, meaning giving it God status. When you say <clears throat> that you have to have it or you will be deceived, then I don't care what you say, trying to defend yourself, you are living by the letter. You're trying to live by the letter and not the spirit. Because if you have the spirit, and I know people are gonna say, well, it doesn't happen to everybody. If you are born again, yes it does. It's a supernatural experience that will change you forever and that's when God writes his law on your heart and you don't have to read about it, I promise you. I love you all, God bless.